The Lord's Sermons, Sermon 25, John 15, 26, and 16, 7. The Promise of the Comforter, revealed to Gottfried Meyerhofer, March 20th, 1872, spoken by Pascal. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of Truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Thus says the Lord. These verses are found in two chapters of the Gospel of John. In the first instance, as a promise that I shall send my deserted disciples the Comforter the spirit of truth, that will show them that everything I taught was true and correct, and in a second instance as an indication that my disease was necessary as a corroboration of what I had told them about myself and my divine mission. For in the second chapter it says, If I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. By this I prove to them that my going to the Father as I expressed it, was partly the conclusion of my mission, and partly unavoidably necessary as the starting point of theirs according to my plan for the salvation of mankind. If a master leaves his pupils before they are quite mature, yet still wants to enable them to continue their studies, he usually nominates a substitute who carries out what is needed for the completion of the course. This is what I did too. My mission upon earth, or my sojourn among my disciples, was of value only as long as they were not yet wholly initiated into my teaching. First I had to conclude my presence on your earth with the greatest act of humiliation and love, which was the practical part of my teaching. I had to actually demonstrate to my disciples what sacrifices my teaching and its preservation required, and show them as an external example what my true disciples must be able to bear. That is, to give even their lives for their belief, which later became the fate of many of them. By my resurrection, I also had to demonstrate to them that death had no power over me. But in the meantime, until my ascension or my return into my kingdom, to help them get over the hard blow the absence of my visible person would deal them, it was my sacred duty as their master and teacher to hold out to them the prospect of a substitute for their loss. Hence I promised them a comforter which, however, they imagined rather as a personality than a power. When I told them this, and many other things, they were still too worldly and could not comprehend the spiritual meaning of my words. Yes, indeed, of my final, greatest and most profound words of farewell. Wherefore I also said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Or in other words, I cannot transform spiritual things into worldly concepts, although you have faith. You are still minor children, and you have yet to submit to the last consecration which will mature you from children to men and enable you to comprehend what you have heard from me and pass it on to others as you received it. This overshadowing by my spirit made them reborn, for my spirit transacted the separation of the spiritual from the worldly. The rational life ceased and the life of the spirit or heart began. Thus, my disciples were endowed with spiritual willpower to speak and act as required by my teaching, thereby assuring everlasting permanency to the work of salvation which I had begun. What in those times happened with my disciples has happened anew in each century with individuals I had chosen for this purpose. There was never a lack of those who completely devoted to me, gave their lives for their convictions. There have always been admonishers and revivers of my so dearly paid for teaching. It was their mission, in the midst of gross misuse of religion, 
to make sure that the teaching of a genuine and true faith did not fall into oblivion. As in your century, there is no lack of such inspired people, and now, as mankind is straying more and more into worldly interests, now, with the end of this trial period for mankind approaching, the number of those keeps increasing who follow my true teaching and who are destined to furnish the first building stones for the establishment of my kingdom, so that I may already find faithful hearts on my advent. For I am not going to preach a second time to deaf ears. The morning must already be drawing, and the spiritual eyes of my adorers must be prepared so that they are able to bear the full light of my love and my appearance unharmed. As in those days, I promised my disciples the Comforter. Thus, also today, I allow to flow into every heart devoted to me the comfort that only my teaching, only the true religion and true confession of faith in accordance with my word can give. Now, the true Comforter comes to dwell within man, when he correctly comprehends and fulfills my two commandments of love. To speed up my work, I have condescended to explain through direct messages quite clearly all that, as my disciples once said, was too difficult and incomprehensible for men. Now, when my messages flow so abundantly, I have actually already descended spiritually to your earth, and am teaching and guiding my children as I once did. Only my visible appearance is still missing, but this would only compel the doubters to believe and would be against man's freedom of decision. I am now again choosing my disciples, who shall sow the golden seed of my teaching of love. But there is no longer any need for me to guide them the way I once did. At that time, I had to use other means. I had to come myself and prove to them my words and deeds, the actual existence of God. Now such forceful means are no longer necessary, for science, with its discoveries in the domains of my cosmic creation, has opened up enough ways for those who observe with spirit and heart to find me everywhere and to recognize my actual existence. Today, teaching through conviction is running parallel with the religious teaching. Only a person who wants to be blind will deny the existence of a God manifest everywhere in creation, below and above, even in man's own heart, despite all counter-evidence. Only such a blind person will deny the existence of a God, a lawgiver, and, as your Bible teaches, a loving father who notwithstanding all man's errors and aberrations, always exercises forgiveness instead of retaliation, patience instead of severe judgment, and at all times wants to further life instead of spiritual death. Also, now the Comforter is put into your hearts, and you are masters of your own peace and tranquility. I no longer have to send him to you, since you already received him from me. It is now up to you to practice diligently in word and deed what you have been taught, thereby showing that you are my children, my disciples of the present time. Do not be concerned about the transgressions in the field of religion all around you. It is true they are awakeners, but their followers will sooner or later miss the principal factor. The Comforter, whom once I promised only to those who were my true disciples. They may erect as many buildings for religious instruction as they like, but he who does not return to my simple house, where only love guided by wisdom rules, will not have the Comforter in his difficult moments, for he lacks true conviction as well as true faith. He is without the spirit of truth, which I once promised and also sent to my disciples, and which everyone receives, who comprehends me in spirit and in truth, and in this way also practices my teaching. As I proved to you a short while ago, there is only one truth. He who disregards this has built upon sand. 
when the great worldly and spiritual storms come that have to take place on this earth for the purification of the spiritual soul substance. Such a house, built upon the shifting sands of rational thinking, will disappear without a trace, together with its foundations. The only building that will firmly stand, resisting all storms and proving itself to be the sole truth, the only firm foundation, is the one that is erected upon my word, the word of the God and creator of the entire universe. For what a God spoke and actually proved to his entire spirit kingdom with such sacrifices as I did on earth cannot be fallible, cannot deceive. The deceived are only those who refuse to listen to all the admonitions and calls from visible and invisible nature, seeking the comforter through reasoning whilst he can only be found with the heart. Therefore, keep in mind the words I once spoke to my disciples and which are recorded particularly in chapter 15, 16 and 17. They are the most important, consequential and profound words, for they were your father's farewell words who, before he had to perform his last act of love, laid another stone the cornerstone of his spiritual edifice, which he left behind on earth, and the significance of which extends far beyond this age. What I promised to my disciples as a comforter that I would send them was already contained in these words, which were recorded by my favorite disciple John. My disciples did not understand them, but you, who are already better schooled and prepared to conceive my teaching as I want to have it understood and applied, you can find in these words the comforter who can enlighten, inspire and strengthen you for all that is coming. Just as once my spirit fortified the disciples to enable them to bear their future fates with the strength of soul needed for their mission. Although you will not experience such bitter moments as did my disciples in their missionary work, you still have to battle all the more with the world, its pleasures and with your fellow men, most of whom have not taken the road you are walking, but the wrong one. What I prophesy to my disciples will happen to you. The world will hate you because you are not of it. That is, because you follow different principles from the majority of people. But this is where the Comforter is closest to you, offering you to make up for this short trial life, longer lasting, greater eternal delights as a reward for faithfully persevering with the ones and for all established word of your Father, your Jesus, who sacrificed his physical life to save mortal beings from spiritual perdition. Therefore, may that be your best comfort, which I put into everyone's heart after every good deed. The best reward and reassurance that my teaching and words have been followed, which, notwithstanding all worldly glory and power, will be the last supports left to those battling in the great ocean of world events. Do not forsake the comforter within your heart, and he who put this comforter there will not forsake you. This assurance you are receiving from the one who has already showered upon you so much heavenly bread, spiritual blessing and true comfort. Amen.